the world around us is changing at the highest rate as ever. The technology increased the pace of our lives. And we, as people working in the tech industry, we feel it even more. We constantly have to learn and keep up with new technology, programming languages, libraries, frameworks, and let me tell you, even emojis. We are all running to keep with all of these changes. And most of us, at some point of time, we get tired and bored. We just want something different, something new, something to keep us even further than the point we are. So we end up talking to recruiters, looking for the next star position in the star company. We look to for an upgrade, for a change. We keep asking ourselves, what's next? So if you have ever felt like this or ask yourself the question of what's next, or you are feeling this way right now, I'm here to tell you, you have reached your pivot point. Most of us, when we reach this point, we tend to rely on our passion. We ask ourselves, what do we like? What does excites us the most? But should the passion drive us or should we drive our passion? I remember myself after a year of joining my first job. I was not challenged anymore. I was great at what I used to do. I could finish projects on time. I could deliver. I could tackle issues. But again, I wasn't happy. Despite all the things I accomplished, I was not feeling okay with myself. So one day I went to office. Our office used to be in a tall building right in downtown San Francisco on the 16th floor. I entered the office. It was very quiet. I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my manager that day. So I went to the room little room small glass window my manager was sitting he looked very stressed with all of the other things that was going on with him so in that meeting that day i asked my manager the question what's next for me now he felt and he felt okay why don't you go and lead a different projects in a way different area maybe that makes you happy so a year passed, I felt bored again. I was again asking what's next, but this time I didn't want it to go to my manager in that one-on-one room and again ask him what is next for me. I started looking for jobs and I found a role at a fit tech startup where I could work on a different projects and different problems where my responsibilities grow and there were new challenges. And this happened twice more during that job too. So I had to go to my manager and ask myself and I got a promotion again and again and again. And the last promotion, which was the fourth one, I was already an architect and I was reporting to the CTO. So there was no more up promotion for me anymore. So again, I started looking outside, interviewed, joined Netflix. I've been in Netflix for around two years. And I'm telling you, Last year, I asked my manager what's next again. I felt something may be wrong with me, you know, particularly that I reached these points too often in my career, but it wasn't me. The job market is great and technology is advancing so rapidly, especially in tech industry. The rate of advancement is so high that we are going to ask ourselves what's next every few years. So let me introduce myself. I am Naz. I'm working at Netflix at a production engineering team. Before Netflix, I was a software architect, as I told you in the story. And I am a person who hit these points too often in my life. You want to follow me? You have questions? Follow me on my website or on my social media handles. I would love to connect with you all. Let's get going.
So what is a pivot point? What's this point of asking what's next? When we often speak about pivot points or career pivots or career shifts, we always think it should be a drastic change. We should completely move in a different direction. But that's not it at all. Pivoting is just one thing to other. It's going to the next level. You can even pivot within your role in the same company. So pivoting is mostly a mindset. It's a method that you can use to discover what's your next move in your career. Pivots happen very often. They are very personal and not only means nothing is wrong with you, but it is also something expected. Hitting a pivot point is a product of your success. It means that you have acclimated to the role that you are in and you mastered everything and the nature of your task is so easy now for you. So you're asking for something more right now. In fact, all high performers hit pivot points. They naturally like to grow and make an impact. And that's actually really motivates them in daily basis. And Netflix is a ground zero for this. So let's talk about a real definition of a pivot. I read this amazing book from Jenny Blake called Pivot. And in that book, she defines a pivot as a methodical shift in a new related direction based on the foundation of your strengths and what's already working. I thought this definition is brilliant. There are so many important notes in here that I like to cover. I actually break this definition into two parts. What's the direction? And what's the foundation? Let's talk about the direction. When we usually talk about pivot points, we actually they actually scare us. But we should know there are opportunities for us to ask what is next and how we're going to make bigger impact. When we think about our growth, we mostly think growth is a linear process like the old notion of a career letter. And then we define comfort zones as a place that you're feeling safe and comfortable all the time in your career. That was the place actually I was in, the place that I started asking myself what is next because I was too comfortable. Comfort zones are the place of mastery. So when you're in this circle, when you're in your comfort zone, you mastered everything. And then as soon as you feel comfortable, some of us, we start to hit it in our fear zone. We start to, the question is, what's next for me? Why I'm not challenged anymore? So we feel the fear and then we start to learn. We either grow in a different direction and we start to get to the new things, take a new project, shift in our roles, take new responsibilities. So we start to learn and eventually we hit our growth zone. But that's not the end. Actually, careers is not a linear line. At least for me, it wasn't. For me, my career, it was more like a sign model or a wave where I was up one day and down another day. I felt I'm comfortable where I was in my modes that I didn't like. I learned something, I grow. Again, I went back down and then I felt like, okay, now I need to learn something else. So there was these challenges, the up and down, the wave model, where we start from zero, we learn, we take the challenge and finally we reach the top. And then we hit our pivot points again and again and again. So let's focus on that point, on that point of pivoting, on that point of feeling comfortable asking what's next. There are a couple of options when you hit that point. And let's talk about that. What would we do? We either can plateau, means that we do nothing. It's a general feeling of, I am fine. It's okay. It's working fine for me. Mm, you know, I don't want to do anything about it. Or we can take an active decline when we are in a role that no longer fits us. But not only we are growing, but actually we are declining with our skills. 
at this point, we have a third choice and the third choice to pivot actually. And pivots can be very small. You don't need to leave your company and from tech, you move to a different industry. It can be within the same role you are inside. But what's important when we pivot is where are we pivoting to? And how much are we pivoting? And I wanna talk about these zones today. We wanna hit a stretch zone when we pivot. We don't wanna pivot that we are still in our comfort zone because we still wanna challenge ourselves. So if you're in a role taking a project, which is still, you mastered it, you know everything, you're not gonna learn something, you're still gonna be in your comfort zone. So you haven't pivoted enough. We wanna pivot enough that we hit this stretch zone. And if you try to pivot too sharply in a role that might be really challenging, you will hit that panic zone where you're panicked because there are too many things to learn and you don't have enough time to master all the things and do the work effectively. So make sure when you hit that what's next question and you're trying to choose what's coming next in your careers, make sure you get challenged enough. Do not over challenge yourself and do not make sure, make sure you're not in your comfort zone. And again, a stagnation zone, which is you're not doing anything, you basically take an active decline. So we talked about pivots. We talked about the direction. Where we want to go, we want to go to our stretch zone. And that's a direction. That's a direction we want to take. Now take a look at the second part of this definition, which is the foundation. Now we're going to talk about foundation. When we want to pivot, what's our foundation? Based on the definition, which I really love, the foundation here should be your strengths and what's already working for you. What does that even mean? I usually describe ballerinas when they take a turn or fuetes, if you, any of you familiar with ballet. And when they take these turns, which are very challenging, they do have one leg on the ground and the leg that the ballerina usually holds to the ground is their dominant leg. It's a leg that they're really, really strong on. So when you want to pivot, think as a ballet dancer that you want to turn and you want to, within that turn, within that career shift and career 10, you want to put that dominant foot on the ground. And that foot's going to give you stability and going to give you strength. I personally think during my career, I focus so much on my weaknesses. What I don't know, what I did not learn, what I'm weak on, what I can't learn, what I have problem in. We often forget about our strengths. We often forget to grow our strengths, to work on our strengths. I'm not saying don't work on weaknesses. We definitely can grow in that side too. What I'm saying here is also grow within your strengths. Use those strengths because that's what you are great at. So how do we pivot? I know that it's crucial to learn yourself, to focus on weaknesses, focus on your strength. Don't pay attention too much to your weaknesses when you, when you pivot. You basically want to pivot to a role that you use those strengths into the new role. So those give you a little bit of confidence when you enter a new role, new career, new job. So here at this part, I want to give you three steps. So next time when you're in this zone of talking, what's next, you can use these three things to decide how to pivot. First, let's talk about foundation because we should start from the foundation. Plant your strengths. When we try to identify our strengths, you can start asking ourselves similar questions to create a vision which is clear and vivid. What are those things that you're strong on? You can ask yourself, how does success look like for me in the future? And how can I, uh, what are those strengths that make me successful? What are my values? What are the skills that other people rely on in the company? They come and ask for it. 
Ask for feedbacks. When you sit with your manager or sit with your colleagues or sit maybe with your partner, ask them, what do you think I'm a strong on? Where do you see I can grow more? Imagine yourself a year from now and imagine it in a 3D clear, colorful, vivid vision. I start writing down where you are a year from now in your career. And then look at where your strengths can help you in a year that's ahead of you. When you identify your strengths, when you have a clear vision of a year from now and how to leverage those strengths moving forward, now we have to connect the gaps. We may need to learn more. We may not be ready for that pivot yet. We may need to prepare ourselves. And that's where connecting the gaps coming through. Look at your vision of where you want to be and compare it to where you are now and see where are those gaps that you fill in. You can fill the gaps with three things. It can be people, it can be skills, it can be project. You may need a mentor as people. You may need a role model or freelancer. The people can help you identify your purpose. They can help you identify your strengths. They can help you shape the vision that you have in your head. Skills are important too. Regarding the skills, you have to learn something maybe. Maybe the pivoting will, will take you into something different and you need a skill to be successful. Let's say you are an engineer and now you want to pivot to being a manager. So you need to work on your people skills. Take courses, get certifications, do pair programming, any resources that can basically help you learn and grow that skills that you need for. And projects. We often forget about projects because projects are super important. That's where you put your skill to work. That's where you put all the guidance to work. Maybe you already even have the skill, but you never had the chance to shake, showcase that skill within a project. So connect those gaps when you are at your current role. Leverage people, projects, and skills. I see my slide went ahead. Okay, so we talked about planting your strengths. We talked about connecting the gaps. And now we want to talk about piloting and testing ideas. That's the third thing you can do. So you know what's your strengths right now. You know how to fill in the gaps. Now we want to put the vision into trial because sometimes the vision may not be the right fit for you. Moving to an example of an engineer when we move to management, maybe they should try it on, on a smaller scale before you actually make the career move. So it's important to be open to new ideas in your career. Do you pilot projects? Test if that idea, if that vision even works on a smaller stage. These pilots can be smaller projects, taking about 10 to 20% of your time. And there are three questions that can help you actually identify the right projects. And I take that from Jenny Blake's book. She called it the triple E factor. Do I really enjoy the project? Can I become expert? And is there room to expand this project into something bigger? Let's say, going back to example, if you want to apply management in a smaller scale, maybe you can start mentoring people within your team. Then expand it. You getting you enjoy mentorship. You become expert and dealing with people. And now you can expand this mentorship to coaching, advocating, and maybe managing. So that's something that can work. It's a small project that you enjoy. You can gain the skills and over time you can expand that into something bigger and eventually to your goal. Reflect. Think about what are those small experiments you can do in your career to push your career even forward. Think about pilots that fall into your stretch zone. Remember, we talked about those zones that we want us to be challenged enough. You don't want to take pilot projects that really over challenge you or not challenging you enough. Think what can move you closer. 
to that one year vision from now. We talked about pivots, we talked about it's okay, it's normal, it's all of us hit that point as high performance. We talked about three steps, how to get there. But what I want you to take out of this is pivoting and knowing to pivot is a skill. It's not a crisis. Nothing is wrong. Pivots are not jumps. You just need to follow those small steps. If you run the pilots, if you connected the gaps, if you know your strengths, you will not jump into your panic zone. I know that sometimes those pilot projects may fail. And sometimes our career shifts may not be the right move. And that's okay. Know that failure is inevitable. But we better try and fail rather than not trying at all because in that process, we're going to learn a lot and a lot of things that can help us during our next movement. I heard this quote long ago that really resonates with me. I'm not sure from who, but it's, it's worth sharing. The quote says, it's not okay to make mistakes. It is only okay to make new mistakes. So if we learn from those pilot projects, from our strengths, from our visions and reapply, even if we fail, that's okay. Hope you all enjoyed this talk. Feel free to connect with me if you have further questions, if you're in your career shift right now, I encourage you to take a pen and paper after this talk and start from your strengths. Get to know yourself. Start from identifying what are you good at. Thanks for listening to me.